I, I just know that we've got a long way to go defensively. And but the fact is, these guys have proven to us that they want to work and they want to be good. And and there's a, definitely a difference right now with the older guys in terms of the tempo and the pace we want to play with compared to the younger guys. But actually, at the end of practice yesterday, I thought there was a glimpse that I'll be able to show these guys today before we do get on the floor that uh, that they can do they can do it because they they started playing with the speed and moving the ball the way we wanted it done. Some good cutting action, you know, some random type basketball that we want to play with and. Uh, so uh, we just got to continue to build each day. You referenced that depth on the perimeter. With that, how important is it that guys like Dalton and Jemai do learn how to play the four just to, to balance out some of that? Well, uh, Jemai can do it. I mean, he, he's done it. I mean, he's, you know, he's basically just played every position like Josiah since he's been here. So that, I mean, he'll, 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 he'll play any of those positions. And then uh, Dalton learning uh, – the whole system and not just, you know, the two wings pretty much do the same. Point guard obviously is a difficult position to play and, and the four with him is different than the way Tobey and Jonas would play in some ways. But uh, the or learning the organization side of it, understanding that, you know, they've got to understand what we're trying to get done out there and, and get comfortable with the movement patterns that we want both offensively and defensively. And, you know, I tell our guys all the time with our defense, it's, it's as much a play as as you'd run as as you do with offense and um and he's got uh, Dalton's got terrific offensive instincts and so I think he should have him on the defensive end it's a matter of a mindset and and he's working at it I uh, like again I I don't and I think he would tell you one of the reasons that he came here was he knew that he wanted to get better defensively and when we were recruiting him I mean we there's no doubt he's going to help us tremendously on the offensive end but but he also knows what we expect from him on the defensive end and he's he's Point blank has told me, he said, Coach, that's why I came here, because I want to be able to learn how to play defense the way that uh, I think it should be played. And and uh, so that's fun going forward, because he's got a chance to just get so much better. But um, he is uh, having to learn uh, a lot quick. And uh, But he but he's, he's embraced it. He's not afraid of it. And uh, it's just a matter of him getting better with it. With all the uh, going back to Tobey, with all the with everything that went into last season and then the experience that he got over the summer, what sort of expectations are you looking forward to the jump from year one to year two? Well, he, he's a much different player right now than he was. Uh, I mean, his confidence is uh, totally different. And Tobey was a player that you know no one's ever you know ran a play for him. Uh, you know, tried to play through him. We've obviously tried to work you know doing things with him and Jonas because we think they both have skills that that we can take advantage of and but you know, it's up to us to get them in positions where they can be effective but Tobey's rebounding uh, it's, it's just a great talent he's, he is something that he has an unbelievable passion for he's got great instincts for it but he's also uh, he's gotten better in so many there's not an area that he hasn't improved in I think what he did with USA basketball was a was a big confidence booster to him and uh, he uh, Again, I, I just think he's got an incredible future ahead in basketball for himself. And and one, because he works so hard. I mean, it really matters to him. And, and he's learning. He is learning a lot of things right now. That uh, And he's being asked to do some things that I'm not sure. Well, we didn't ask him to do them a year ago, but we're asking him to do more and be more of a, uh, and a force on both ends. And uh, we think he can shot block if he wants to, if it's in his mindset, because he's so quick getting to the offensive boards. He ought to be that quick getting off the ground to go block shots. And then offensively, we think if he'll get himself off the ground as quick as he can, again, going to offensive rebounds, he ought to be able to do that with the ball in his hand, too. Coach in the back here, in the back. Uh, who do you see taking up that number one backup role uh, for the point guard position, or if the guy's unable to go, the starting point guard position? You know, what I was saying, I said it to the team I, almost every day, but I know I said it to them uh, two days ago. Uh, I'm not really concerned about who's going to start the game. I, I'm, I'm, I told them, I said, I'm trying to figure out who we can finish it with. And uh, I think we, we've got so many different things, uh, different players that, you know, I can tell you we've got eight guys, nine guys that I think could be would be considered starters. If that's, but uh, I'm, I'm again, like I said, uh, the honest answer to that is I don't know who how it's going to play out right now because we haven't had the whole team. You know, Zakai's not back out there totally. He's doing a little bit right now. He's 
I would say that I think he, Chad and Garrett would probably tell you they think he's probably ahead of schedule, but uh, he has done a little bit, uh, started practice each day, and then we, we back him down. Now, he would, if it were up to him, he'd practice the entire time, but we won't let him. Tobey's been out a couple of days uh, with, with a concussion protocol, and, uh, and JP hasn't really done much at all since we started here regular season. And uh, uh, DJ's missed the last couple of practices uh, just due to the fact that he hasn't lived up to what we want him to do in all that facets of the program. So we haven't put it all together. And, and in terms of putting together the whole thing, uh, I don't know other than the fact that I, I like where we are. I think we're going to have a lot of different options, and I think this group of guys, I'm not sure it matters to them. I, I, would, I don't know if I'd say it. I think everybody would like to have their name called before the game and go out, but uh, we've just tried to drive home the point. We want to – who can we count on in the last five minutes? We think we're going to be in a lot of close games this year, again, with the schedule that we play, and we've got to be able to finish those games out. How has Freddie grown defensively, and then where is he at at being an effective offensive player when he doesn't have the ball in his hands? Uh, great question. Uh, I think he's gotten better in all those areas. I think that he is finding out, uh, like, again, you know what, he, he, where he is right now reminds me so much of where Kennedy was, you know, uh, had been asked his whole career to have the ball in his hand and just go create offense, find a way to, you know, come off a screen, go create some offense for your teammates, and Shot clock gets down, just get a shot up. And uh, but he's playing, uh, he's learning how to play. But but you know he's got a great attitude about it. Um, I don't think Freddie yet truly understands all he can do and the way uh, he's going to have to continue to. Uh, he, he he does know. I will say that he does know what he needs to do, but it's hard. And uh, but he, but he's going to do it because he's got a, he's got a good attitude about it. He's he's uh, open to being coached. But uh, to me, he's, uh, he's learning how to play a whole different style of basketball. And it's up to us to get him to do what he does well, make sure he understands how that can blend with his teammates and what they need to do, what he needs to do to play well with them, that they want to play with him, he wants to play with them. Defensively, again, he goes through it like um, uh, most young players. You know, they lay on screens, you know. They, they, they don't realize uh, how fast a game is from going from one play to the next play to the next play to the next play. Young guys normally make one play, then stop, then they get to where they make two plays and stop, then three. So it's a matter of getting a mindset that you've got to play the possession. You've got to end the possession. And uh, he's gotten better with it every day. But, um, I mean, I would say it not only uh, any of the young guys, certainly they've got a long way to go to still understand just how hard it is to play the game the way it needs to be played from a, from a cardio standpoint. You know, we talk a lot about cardio toughness. You know, I, I like to get guys tired and then see if they can play, and, and it's hard. Uh, when, when you're tired, can you make the right play? Can you make that extra effort play? Those type situations. And there's not one freshman on our team that's not going through that right now, including Freddie and Cam and, and the rest of the guys. It's just, uh, again, they're playing against some – there's four or five guys out there right now that understand that. and. You watch the game practice with them, or the you know just practice tape. They see they see it, and um, the more we show it to them, and, and I've seen I have seen improvement with them. Every time we show them show it to them on tape, the next day you see there is a carryover from the film room. Coach, later this month you guys are going to play Michigan State for that game for the Maui relief. What does it mean to you to be able to contribute to re helping rebuild that community? Well, I think it's awesome to have the opportunity. I mean, obviously our heart and prayers go out to the families over there that, you know, it's going to be a long comeback for them. And the and, uh, fact is, you know, Maui, they held on as long as they could, hoping that they could have the tournament there. And But with what's what they're faced with right now, I, I think with FEMA and everyone over there, it was just really hard to try to put it all together. And But the fact is, uh, you know, Maui's been a big part of college basketball for a long time. A lot of great memories and have come out of that tournament. And the fact that they, they need help. And uh, when it came about and we called Michigan State, there was no doubt in my mind. If you know Tom Izzo, I mean, he there was no hesitation. You know, yeah, that's the right thing to do. And and um, it'll be they'll, – they'll sell it out. It'll be a great crowd there. I mean, they have, a, you know, one of the great fan bases in the country and certainly have great respect for Tom and what he's done through the years. But um, I think we're both uh, – and the fact we're in it this year is just uh, – 
it's, it's neat that we can play a small part in trying to help that community be built back. Coach, I know you've been doing this a while. Have you had a father-son combination like Justin and, and Jordan before with staff and player? And, and what have you found out about Jordan as a player since, since he got here? You know, Rob, I, I don't think I have really. Maybe a walk-on or something like that. But uh, certainly from a player standpoint, uh, I, I mean, Justin should be a proud dad. But, you know, he always kind of low-keyed that. But from the time that – I tell the story from the time that uh, Jordan started uh, hanging around here when he first went off to college at uh, U.S. Upstate, up, upstate uh, Spartanburg. He uh, would come to the gym, and he'd work out with Jordan Bowden and Lamonte Turner. And I can tell you, from the, t they all said, Coach, he, if he ever did want to transfer, you, we would want to, him to be in our program. And, uh, and uh, you know, when he decided it was time that he was going to do that, uh, I think I would, Justin would probably tell you, I was the one that said, we have to have him. You know, it's either him or you. You decide, you know. <laughs> Not really. I didn't say that. But the fact is, we knew we wanted him. And, and I wanted Justin to know that. And I said, you know, we'll recruit him. You don't, you don't have to let us recruit him. And he was, Jordan had the opportunity to go to a lot of places. And uh, I think because of it, you know, obviously the love he has for his family and they're a close-knit family. But he's much more than what we thought. Uh, we knew he could shoot the ball. There was no doubt. He, he, um, he but he, he's much more than that. He understands it. He's, it, and it's going to be fun watching him continue. I mean, I've watched him now. Just he's, he, he's competitive. Uh, a guy that can uh, score at three different levels. A guy that can uh, get a shot off when he has to get it off. Uh, but again, as, and his body's changed a lot since he's been here. But it's just only going to continue to change more. But he's, he's got a really good basketball IQ. He's, he's, like I said, he's competitive. Having to do what he has to do every day against the guards he has to play against has been good for him. And we spent pretty much the whole summer playing him at the point. Uh, and now he's, uh, because of that, I think that's helped him a lot too because he can, again, play certainly all three per perimeter positions. And so we're excited about him. And, and uh, you know, he's going to be a, a big part of this team. Rick, how would you assess where Kate Phillips is at right now, and have y'all made a decision on whether he'll redshirt or not? You know, there was no doubt when Cade came that we we said from the beginning uh, we talked to him about he was going to redshirt, and uh, because of JP being out, and uh, and Cade didn't get to do anything with us this summer, he wasn't able to play, you know, on the trip in the, over in Italy, and so his first real work was when uh, we started when school started and, you know, m m moving him in through the vitamins. And, and uh, but one thing he has done since he's been here, he, he has spent a lot of time reconstructing his shot where, you know, he, he's, he's gotten much better with that. But uh, to answer your question, uh, I don't know if we can redshirt him because uh, if you ask Santi and Josiah, they would say you can't, we can't because, I mean, you watch him every day in practice and I go home and watch the tape, uh, he's productive. You know, I mean, and, it, and he might not even score a basket the whole day. I think uh, actually in the scrimmage the other day when we scrimmaged, Tobey didn't scrimmage. And, I, and if I'm not mistaken, Cade was our leading rebounder. He had nine or ten rebounds. And, uh, and he gets things done. He's, he's, he's understanding what we want to do uh, uh, offensively. You know, he's picked it up quicker than we thought. And I would say that he and, and – and, uh, Cam have probably been the two biggest surprises with everything that's going on. And, uh, but, again, as I'm standing here being honest with you, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that question. I think it depends on uh, the next couple of weeks, how it, how it plays out. But uh, I know one thing, he's got a great future. And he's going to be, he's gonna, he's gonna be uh, a guy that's going to help us win a lot of games here. And he's, gonna, he's a big part of this program t this year and, and moving forward. With Santi and Josiah returning back here for their fifth year, what impact are you expecting them to make in these early months of practice? You know, the biggest thing I, t I told both of those guys when they, we talked about them coming back it was, was leadership, knowing that we had a lot of new guys in the program. And then I told them, I said, personally, coaching staff-wise, we're, we're not going to judge you on – because you, you guys have worked. They've always worked. You know, they've been guys that – we, you know, have represented this program the way we wanted it represented. They are guys that, uh, you know, they bring it every day. I mean, you, you know, I get on them like I would anybody else, and they handle that fine. But I said, you're going to be judged this year really more so than ever on your leadership. 
what you're going to do to help these young guys. And when we got to call last week, one of the assistants got it about um, how they're glad that um, those guys came back and how much has helped the young guys. It, that's what we were looking for, and uh, they li they've lived up to it. And then, uh, so, but we expect a lot from those two guys, and uh, and then certainly when when Z gets back, and and, and Jemai, Jemai Meshach's been a big part of it. I mean, those guys have played a lot of big minutes, and but uh, again, leadership I think will be the biggest thing when when it gets right down to it. There were two more, Grant and Vince in the back. Why do you think Santi and Joe came back at the end of the day? Well, the good thing about them getting to go out and experience what they can experience through the, you know, finding out what what they need to do, I think both of them, and I think any time someone comes back back like that, I think it shows a lot of maturity in the fact that they ask questions. They uh, certainly have agents that uh, they believe in and, and have helped them, but when you get down to it, both of those guys are guys that are going to uh, – with or without an agent, they're going to ask their own questions, and, and uh, they're going to they're going to get the feed. They want to hear the feedback themselves, and I'm sure during the interviews they would be the kind of guys that would point blank say, "Hey, what do you think I should do?" and or "What do you see me doing? What where, where would it be?" and but I was glad that both of them got to go through it because next year it's, it's that's what will be their future. They're going to have to go, to go through it again. They'll. And I think there's no doubt both of them would tell you they, they learned from the trials they had and what they had to do. And uh, both of them have come back, uh, and they really better than they've ever been. I mean, I th if you think about it, this was the first summer that Santi's been here since he's been here, and I think it, it's shown up. And I mean, it's, we know that he's a, a machine when it comes to cardio, fitness, and the way he runs around. But but you know, he, he's at a level that he hasn't been and I think a lot of that has him because he was here for the first time Josiah has had his best off season where he's uh, he hasn't missed a day you know he's been uh, knock on wood you know he's he's he's, uh, he's taking great care of his body which he always has but uh, the little nagging injuries he had he's been able to stay ahead of all that and um, they've gotten uh Again, I think after the feedback, there was no doubt they knew they wanted to come back. And I think it speaks volumes about our program and the university and the, our fan base here. Both of those guys, uh, they love it here. Uh, they love this university, and they know that. Uh, and, and I really think when some of these guys go out and they have people like each of them have people they can talk to about, you know, what's it like up there? What's it going to be like here? And I think some people say, hey, look, it's different. Believe me, when you're in college, that's some of the best years of your life, and I would want to ride that train as long as I could ride it. And uh, and I think, uh, obviously, with the NIL, that plays a part in it now. And uh, so um, I do think both of them made really wise decisions in coming back. Coach, in the back here, you said – in the back, in the back, way back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said Jordan Ganey has been getting a lot of minutes at the point guard position. What's the difference between him at point guard and Zakai at point guard? Well, there's a lot there, but just because, you know, Zakai has been with us and, you know, uh, I don't, I think it kind of, after Zakai got hurt last year, I think it kind of went unnoticed how much he had gone from being a guy that just scored when he got here to where, how he became such a good distributor. Uh, you know, he's, I think he tied Kennedy's record for assists in a year, uh, the, what Kennedy had the year before. So he's, he's been around and Zakai's, they're different. I mean, uh, uh, I do think this, that when Zakai comes back, I think it's going to really help uh, Freddie and, and Jordan uh, a lot. Things will help them a lot because they're, uh, there's nobody on our team that can do what he can do defensively the way he does it. And uh, you know, Zakai is a guy that changes the court when he's out there. I mean, he changes it uh, in a lot of different ways. But Jordan uh, uh, can really shoot the ball, just like Zakai. I mean, they both can shoot the ball. Uh, but uh, I'd just say right now the fact that Zakai's been around, he knows that he's played with these guys longer. He, uh, he's been able to – obviously, he knows the defensive system better and uh, ball screen defense. That's something that I think Jordan probably has had to learn more because when he is at the point, you know, he's going to get screened a lot more there in ball screen situation as opposed to when he's off the ball more. But, uh, again, he's improved. He's embraced it. And uh, we're just fortunate and blessed that we have them both. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you, guys.